Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. I want to thank our sponsor, Bank Hometown, who helps make the show happen. In our second segment, we have a couple representatives from Autism Allies here with us. We've got Lori Bonavita, who's the new, uh, hire, newly hired Vice President of Clinical Services, and Diane Crucial, uh, the Director of Human Resources. Welcome. Thank, thank you. you. So maybe, uh, D Diane, maybe you could start just what you know, Autism Allies is all about, about the organization. Sure. So uh, we're a young organization and it's super exciting. We actually broke ground where we are. Uh, 2016, there's been a number of moves and, and things that have happened. We've grown from one employee back in 2016 to here we are pushing towards 100 employees, two wow. locations, one, uh, actually now three, correct myself, because we just opened a new site here in Worcester this mm -hmm. past year. But we have one in Shrewsbury and then one out in uh, the West Springfield area, which is actually where Lori works out of. But uh, we're an ABA service. So uh, it's applied behavioral analysis for those that aren't familiar with the term. And basically we work with uh, children and their families that uh, deal with autism. Mm -hmm. And we provide uh, direct care services in a wide variety of environments. So we have in-home for those that it works best for. We have in-center services. And then we have uh, social community activities as well. So that's a little bit of who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and autism, I, you know, I'll, I'll let you speak to this, but generally speaking, awareness around it, um, you know, diagnoses you know, have increased significantly and, and, and in that uh, regard, more resources and, and expertise is needed. And so, uh, Lori, when we talk about implied behavioral analysis, you know, maybe what, what is that uh, as a form of therapy treatment? It is. It's the only treatment that's um, empirically based. So it's research. It's a science um, behind um, treating the, the diagnosis of autism. It's the only one that's insurance approved. Mm -hmm. um, and behavior analysts who supervise the treatment are, um, they go to school for two years to learn how to apply the science mm -hmm. in, um, in our setting and they are a graduate degree, they're masters educated um, and they work hard to apply the science in home and in centers um, and they use the science, there's research behind it uh, and it's um, it's empirically based and we do research in our centers to make sure that we're doing it correctly and applying those interventions and it's individually based. So when a client comes in, there's assessments that we do to make sure that the, the intervention that we're applying is individualized to each one of our clients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure that in, you know, insurance recognition is important for a lot of individuals and families, you know, as a way to be able to access and afford, afford services, you know, that are very much needed. Absolutely. Um, and so, uh, Diane, you had mentioned a, a location in Worcester. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to say where that, yeah. Absolutely. So we're excited because it's a new endeavor for us. Uh, it's a combination of not only serving individuals with autism, but it's also a daycare. And it's a unique initiative that we're leading into because we're all about inclusivity as well. And over the last 10 years, there's been a bigger and bigger push in the school systems and the communities to have inclusiveness, not just for our clients, but for all people who suffer from any type of disability. But so we are the first in the area to offer a service such as this, to be begin children at a young age getting used to being around children that have a condition such as mm -hmm. this or the children that are experiencing autism getting used to being in that environment in a in a you know surroundings where it's not a huge transition from them to go to a center-based type situation into the school system right and that's our ultimate goal is to be able to mainstream all of our clients into the school system and so we're excited to offer this service. It's right here in Worcester on Oxford Street. So, uh, you know, uh, we'd love for people to take a look at us, uh, to reach out to us if they have any questions. Uh, we're available for all of that. And, and that's a, you know, a big, big piece of, of kind of successful therapies and, and, and programs that, that can be put in place. It's, you know, if there's a situation where there's an apparent or, or someone thinks there may be uh, an issue of autism or, you know, to, to kind of get in, into services quickly as, as, and early and, and kind of put together a plan. Yeah, well, oftentimes um, services are not accessible and especially in the daycare setting, if, 
it's just a typical daycare setting, oftentimes that staff is not trained on how to deal with mm -hmm. individuals who might have behaviors that are not typical. Um, and so our families say they get told, thank you, but we can't maintain your child here. And so what we're trying to do is say, we'll, we'll take you, you're welcome here. And not only can your child who's diagnosed come here, but we'll take your your um, typically developing children as well. So it's, um, we're welcoming entire families. We're um, supporting um, parents as well by offering parent training uh, to the whole, so we're trying to treat the whole family at right. Autism Allies as well. Right, and I, I would assume, Diane, that daycare, you know, piece is important, or those child care services in the sense that if you've got experts on the scene, you know, working and uh, with an individual or young child who's got autism, kind of putting together a plan, having, you know, kind of some documentation, having the family, as, as you mentioned, Lori, educated, so that when they go into a public school system or any other type mm -hmm. of school system, you've got kind of a body of work, you've got some expertise. It's not like a student is starting pre-K or kindergarten and, and, the, and the, a teacher's got to figure this out. Absolutely. It, and, you know, we're blessed to be in a time where children are getting diagnosed sooner, mm -hmm. earlier. So it isn't that they're waiting until they get to school before a diagnosis happens. We're seeing it now in toddlers. So we're able to start addressing and training and developing and, and working with that whole family to be able to support them so we can make that transition. And a lot of times, uh, a good majority of these children, if we can start those services early enough, can achieve great things, can mainstream into the school system. I'm not going to say everyone. I can't make right. promises we can't right. keep. Right. But at the same time, it goes a long way to giving a, a, a f fulfilling life as we in the rest of greater society view it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes families don't even know, even with that diagnosis, that there are early intervention services that are available even before the student might be eligible for, for kind of traditional mm -hmm. school. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, so it's, it's our job to advocate for those parents in a way where we not only treat them in our clinics and when we go into their homes, but connect them with those resources. Um, so we do provide those services as well. Uh, and if, so the, the Oxford, uh, uh, 18 Oxford Street, but also in Western Mass, Agawam is? Uh, yes, we're opening a, um, so we're currently located in West Springfield, Massachusetts. West Springfield, okay. Yes, but we're opening a bigger center because the need is there. Right. So we're moving to Agawam, hopefully within the next month, a bigger, newer center um, because we are servicing now a bigger teen population. Um, so we're going to have a bigger teen space, a bigger, I'll call it the littles for the little guys, right. a bigger space for them, um, a bigger playground area uh, so we can do um, bigger, m better things for right. not only our kids but our families as well. Right. And, um, you know, when we talk at the chamber on a daily basis with our members, you know, regardless of the size of the company or the sector they're in, workers and workforce is a huge issue and you've got some strategies around that or? A absolutely we do. Um, we're not going to lie, we're all still suffering from the fallout of the pandemic and still trying to strategize to bring employees back in. Uh, we have a unique uh, situation uh, that makes us very palatable, I think, to a greater po population of employees. We can accommodate part-time schedules and people who are looking for second jobs mm -hmm. and those types of things. Uh, we bring in a lot of individuals that way. Don't get me wrong, we do full-time as well. But we tend to attract a lot of people that are interested in, in being able to flex around their availability. Mm -hmm. And we're able to do that. Uh, our um, general hours, because again, we're working around children's school schedules, so mm -hmm. it's typically after school and early evening um, hours. But what we've also done is We've also changed the way that uh, we recruit. We changed the way of, of what we're looking for. People do not need to come to us with previous experience. While it's always a plus, th we're, that's not our expectation. We will train you, we will teach you everything that you need to know to be able to be successful in this role. We offer a one full week. We're looking to expand that uh, of training before mm -hmm. you ever work with a client mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you can get comfortable about what ABA is, what does it look like, how do I get my supports, those kinds of things. And then lastly, um, you know, it's our ability to keep training and, and 
um, elevating people to the next level. We offer certification. Uh, mm -hmm. We expect that there will be a required certification going forward. So we provide all of that training and uh, development and, and the costs for getting certified and maintaining those certifications. And then the promotability within our organization. Right. We have people who have come to us in our behavioral technician, that's our entry level direct work level, that have moved up to become the behavior um, analyst, that have moved up into uh, director roles right, in our right. organization. So we're able to do that where we see a lot of uh, organizations in our space that can't or are unwilling to do those things. So, so we're very proud of our ability to do that for people. So flexibility and career ladders. Absolutely. Well, on two fronts, uh, if people are interested uh, in learning more, both in terms of maybe services that their uh, child uh, or, or may need and or the work uh, opportunities, how do they, where can they go, website? Absolutely. They can go to, uh, we actually have two websites, one specifically for our daycare, which is Early Steps. Early so Steps. they can look for that or they can look for Autism Allies. And then if they want to send us a resume or something, they can go directly to hr at autismallies.com. Got it. Well, thank you for being with us, and uh, good luck with the expansion. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Thanks we're going to be right us. back on our final segment. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential.